Tonight, inshallah, we'll attend the singing of the opening chapter of the Dela'il, the Guides to Goodness, by the group Al Musafirun. And we'll have the opportunity to meet Sheikh Muhammad Al Yaqubi, the one who has translated this Dala'il Al Khairat in a way which is very, very unique. So, this particular translation, much effort has gone into. Uh, ascertaining the veracity of the copy. So if you read in the introduction to the Dala'il and the translation, Sayyidina Sheikh will mention the journey which he has gone on, which has been a historic version, uh, a historic journey, where he's traveled to different parts of the world, where he's taken through his prophetic inheritance from his grandfathers, the version of Dala'il al-Khairat which they were reading. He's traveled to the cities of Marrakesh, in Morocco and met with those who preserve the Dela'il and preserve the heritage and the tradition of this book. And he sat down with the scholars of Fas in Morocco who also do that. And then it's been compared against the oldest of the Ottoman versions which they have found in Turkey and come together. And he's presenting today, inshallah, to us this translation, this new translation of the Dela'il al-Khairat and inshallah, as we have seen uh, a renaissance, if you like, or a renewal of the connection of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu to the Burda through the English translation, which Sayyidina Sheikh has done, inshallah, we hope that there will be a renewal of the Dala'il al-Khairat and an invitation for people to tap in, to tune in, to join this goodness, which is ultimately the key to arriving to closeness to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that those of you who will be closest to me on the day of resurrection are those who give the most salawat upon me. And this amazing manual we have by Imam Al-Jazuli, he was a genius and he was a lover of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In so much that he utilized and used everything within creation, everything within nature, everything in existence to be able to convert it into praising the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So whether that's the number of the trees and the branches and the leaves, or whether it's the number of the waves in the sea and the creatures in the sea and the animals above the ground or the stars in the sky or the sun and the moon, everything in creation, he was able to use it and use their numbers, and use their motions, and use their beings, and use their states as a means of sending peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so this is a very special book. And we ask Allah Most High to make us part of the revival of this book, or the renewal of this book. And we ask Allah to give us the honor in connecting us to this book which is a book of peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And today we will have this unique opportunity to be blessed with the presence of Al Musafirun, the group who will be singing from the chapter, and everybody's invited to join in. And also later on this afternoon, we will have the presentation by the translator himself, Sayyidina Sheikh Muhammad Al Yaqubi. Alhamdulillah, without further ado, what I would like to do now is just share uh, a little bit, a little story, which many, many people know in regards to Dala'il al-Khairat. But for the ones who aren't so familiar, Imam al-Jazuli, who was Imam Muhammad Suleiman al-Jazuli, as we said, he's known as Sidi bin Suleiman in Morocco. He was of the Shadali path, the Shadali Sufi path. And he was known to be a great scholar. And his journey to author the original Dala'il al-Khairat started when he met a young girl and she miraculously caused a well to overflow with water. Upon inquiring and upon questioning her, she told him that this is from the power which is within Dala'il al-Khairat. And in the same way that that well overflowed with water through the salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi through the peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for many, many years since then, through the Dala'il, through this book, our hearts have been allowed to overflow with love 
of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through the reciting of the Salat and the Salam. The peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So without further ado, we'd like to thank once again the Bradford Literature Festival for facilitating this excellent event and the many events which are happening throughout Bradford over the next few days and have already happened. Uh, and alhamdulillah, we'd like to open the way now for Al Musafirun group to come and perform the opening chapter from the Dela Ilul Khairat. And before that, we will have a short recitation from the Quran from Sheikh Nadi Al Hanafawi. Jazakum Allah Khair. اللهم صل على المصطفى حبيبنا محمد عليه السلام اللهم صل على المصطفى حبيبنا محمد عليه السلام الله اللهم صل على مصطفى حبيبنا محمد عليه السلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان محمد أبا أحد
MashaAllah, what a beautiful recitation of the beautiful book, Dala'il al Khairat. Authored by a beautiful author, Imam al Jazuli, sending beautiful peace and beautiful blessings upon our beautiful Prophet. Alhamdulillah, now we have the honor of introducing the beautiful Sheikh who has done the beautiful translation of this beautiful book. So even the physical copies of the book, the introduction, the English version, and the Arabic version, so much ihsan and itqan, so much focus, so much excellence, so many uh, intentions have been placed into this book. You can see that even to the extent that the calligrapher is from the most qualified of calligraphers, the typesetters are from the most qualified. The quality of the book itself, it's a beautiful book, alhamdulillah. It's a beautiful book with a beautiful introduction 
a beautiful foreword, a beautiful ijaza in the book. And this, inshallah, will be presented to us by our beautiful Sheikh, Sayyidina Sheikh Muhammad Al Yaqubi, tonight. For those who aren't familiar with the Sheikh, he's a scholar from Syria of the highest echelons, an Islamic scholar of jurisprudence and many of the Islamic sciences. And when it comes to the command of the English language, there are few people in the world who equal his rank in Islamic scholarship, if any. Sheikh Muhammad al Yaqubi, for many years, has been serving the Ummah of the Prophet by spreading and sharing the prophetic inheritance which has come to him from his scholars and from his fathers and his great grandfathers who go all the way back through Sayyidina al Hassan to the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a scholar of the highest ranks, mashallah, tabarakallah. Sheikh Muhammad al Yaqubi is well known for his talks, his publications, the books which he has spread around the world in several different languages, and from amongst the works which we see is the best selling refuting ISIS work, which helped, alhamdulillah, to save the world from this cancerous group who were causing so much chaos to the point that even we were affected here. Our community here, not just as the Muslim community, but the wider community here were affected by this. And Sayyidina Sheikh Muhammad al Yaqubi played a leading role in refuting them using the highest scholarly arguments and taking from the tradition of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a means of defending the Ummah and defending the world from the problems which were caused by this group of people. In addition to this, he's considered to be from the most influential Muslims in the world today and has been recognized many times. He has many of the works, including the Shama'il of Habib al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa and an introduction to Sahih al-Bukhari. Sheikh Muhammad al-Yaqubi is somebody who is not stingy when it comes to distributing the light which he has taken. When it comes to distributing the knowledge which he, he has taken. And when it comes to bringing people closer to Allah and his messenger. And we ask Allah Most High that on this blessed day in the city of Bradford, that Sheikh Muhammad Ali Yaqubi allows us to embark on the journey with him into the renewal of this beautiful book with beautiful peace and blessings upon the beautiful messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And without further ado, I would like to invite Sayyidina Sheikh to take us on that journey with him. Please, please be seated. In the name of Allah, the merciful and the compassionate, praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Best prayers for blessings are to be sent to the final messenger, the prophet of God, our master Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, peace be upon you all as well. We are here at Bradford Literature Festival to celebrate, but what? Our celebration today is summed up in one word. We are here to celebrate love. This is what sums up the book we are launching today, Guides to Goodness, by Imam Al-Jazuli, a famous Moroccan saint. The most circulated book in the Muslim world for many centuries after the book of God, the Holy Quran.
as Shakespeare says in the beginning of his sonnets, from fairest creatures we desire increase. Beauty is loved by everyone. And beauty is summed up in many aspects. It manifests itself in the form of the body, in what God created around the world, and in many other aspects which people of wisdom look for. So there are amongst us people who look for the beauty of the face or the beauty of the roses in the gardens. There are amongst us people who look for the beauty of favors. And there are people who go deeper to look for wisdom, the beauty of wisdom, the beauty of ethics, virtues, the beauty of philosophy and knowledge. And for anyone who loves any level of beauty, the beauty of the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace be upon him, our master, sums up the world of beauty and the worlds of beauty and every aspect of beauty. This is why everyone who loves anything beautiful and anyone beautiful must love the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him. No wonder Imam al-Jazuli, the author of this book, Guides to Goodness, chose the way of love. There are many ways to God. To reach God, you can reach God through many ways. But the shortest way to God goes through love. We have a catchphrase in Arabic that says, Ahlun niya saru, ahlul mahabba taru. People who rely on their intentions, on their good works, they would walk to reach God. They go through the way to God walking. But people who rely on their love, they go to God flying. They fly to God. This is why our prophet summed up also this in a beautiful statement when he says, a person will be with whom he loves. That is to say, in this world you love someone, you will be with them in the garden, in the heavens, on the day of judgment. Now, Imam al-Jazuli chose the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as the subject of this book. We're going to speak about the subject of the book, the author of the book, and the book itself. Three angles. The subject of the book is a prophet of Islam. Now, there are many ways to serve, to introduce, to explain, elaborate on the life of the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it would be boring for an ordinary reader, for a common Muslim, to go through a book that contains chains of transmissions of uh, tradition or explanation or elaboration on uh, the exegesis of several verses of the Quran and etc. This is very boring and probably beyond the level of a common reader. Imam al-Jazuli loved the Messenger of Allah. Every bone in him, in the recess of his heart, the love for the Prophet dwelled from when he was born. He's a descendant of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He wanted to present his love. So he chose the form of prayers. So the book is about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it is a book of prayers. Now for us to understand the power of prayer, the power of praying, in Arabic we have salah and dua, two different words that are translated in the English language in the same way. We distinguish between them by 
saying ritual prayer, pointing out to the five daily prayers, and prayer, which is dua, asking God. So he chose to present these forms of prayers for blessings, for the prophet, for the messenger of God, through which the reader asks for himself, for his prosperity, for his relief, for his recovery, for good health, for protection. In fact, when we pray for the messenger of God, we're not doing him a favor. We're doing ourselves the greatest favor because the messenger of God is the most beloved to God, the dearest to Allah. Allah has chosen from pre-eternity to be the final messenger, the imam of messengers, the seal of prophets, the source of light, the mine of secrets, the spring of light. So when we pray for him, we're asking Allah to raise him on the ladder of perfection. And as there is no level of perfection, but there is higher of it. And this is what we're doing. The blessings we're requesting and invoking for the, for the messenger of God are to raise him higher and higher in perfection and in closeness to God. And in the same way, to bring us closer to God because this brings pleasure to God that we love his beloved. We pray for blessings for his beloved. We follow his beloved. We emulate the behavior of his beloved. We trace the practices of his beloved and we embrace them. It pleases God so God opens his treasures for those who pray for his messenger. That's the point of connecting the prayers about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for him to our lives. Throughout the book, we read the beautiful characteristics of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the matchless miracles of the Messenger of God. As Imam al jazuli although he did not want to write a book of biography about the Prophet, but the prayers in it present a biography of the Prophet in a very indirect way. It teaches, it tells the many miracles of the Prophet, the many good character of the Prophet وسلم, the beautiful character of the Prophet وسلم. It presents the names of the prophets before him. And in this regard, Imam al jazuli wanted to build bridges in the society, exactly as the Bradford Literature Festival has tried to do now, building bridges between communities, removing boundaries between cultures by hosting this event. And I present my deepest thanks to the board of Bradford Literature Festival for this. Imam al jazuli tried this many centuries back, building bridges, spreading love, spreading peace, the prayers are for peace and blessings for the prophet, for the messenger of God. Word like, words like peace occurs 140 times in the book. Words like mercy occurs 90 times in the book. And it goes on and on. This is what the book is about. And not solely for us as Muslims, exclusively picking up our messenger and choosing him alone, to honor, but also you see how Imam al jazuli honors all messengers and includes their names, all prophets, from Adam, the father of the, uh, humankind, till Muhammad, the final messenger, and especially with special highlights on Moses and Jesus and Mary, Maryam, peace be upon them all. And he presents their names and prayers for them to show us that we believe in all messengers and all prophets and we honor all of them. This book being about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the best response against 
the slanders of the prophet. There are a lot of people who go around to slander the messenger of God or to slander any sacred figure. As Muslims, our response to slanderers is to praise the messenger of God, to pray for him. And he wrote his book in a very difficult time when the Portuguese were attacking the coastal cities of Morocco, he turned his attention to defend the messenger of God in a beautiful way by making people attached to him. And when people are attached to the messenger of God, you see only love and mercy on the face of the earth. Unfortunately, there are a lot of misunderstandings, and even amongst us as Muslims, we teach people more about the battles the Prophet went through or fought against his enemies more than about the peace treaties he made with his enemies, and he made more peace treaties than the war he waged. But a fact that is almost lost. We forget that the Prophet وسلم, had a Jewish neighbor, and he would give him food first before anyone else. He would visit the sick even amongst the non-Muslims in the community. The Prophet was sent but with mercy as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states. This is a, a banner, this is the main goal of the message of the Prophet. We have not sent you but with mercy to the worlds. This is why when we are attached to the Prophet, we walk on the face of the earth with peace, with love, first towards each other, because we have so much hatred, animosity amongst each other, and the intra-conflicts between Muslims are probably more dangerous than the conflict between Muslims and others. But we like to blame others. To err is human, to blame it on others is politics. We like to blame our errors and our failures on others. Let's look in ourselves and see really, do we represent the message of the Prophet of Islam, Sayyiduna Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the best way as he likes, as he wanted, rather than just claiming to love him. Claims can be made very easily. But we want your words and your actions to speak louder than your voices. As Rumi put it in one way, make your words louder than your voices. Your actions should speak louder than your voices. When we are spreading this book, which was recited in groups in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Uzbekistan, in Bosnia, in Morocco, where it started, everywhere in the Muslim world you go, you find the La Ilul Khayrat, when we recite this book, we just don't mean that we're repeating words of prayers, forms of prayers for the messenger of God. We are working on ourselves to improve ourselves. And this is one of the best benefits of this book. It indirectly changes you by repeating the forms of prayers. This book is meant to be recited at least once every week. It is divided into different ways. One of them is four quarters for people who would like to read it every four weeks. Three thirds for those who would like to finish it every three days. And in eight parts for those who would like to finish it every week, that is to say they start on Monday and they finish on Monday. So they read on Mondays two parts Part number one and part number eight are made shorter than the rest of the parts. And it is the la'il, guides, or as known, the leel, the guide. Because you need a guide in your life. And it's very important to have a guide. To travel without a guide, you'd be lost. In the wilderness of ignorance, in the wilderness of vice and disobedience and transgression against God, you need a guide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before revealing Al-Quran, the holy book of Islam, Allah sent a messenger. The book did not come on tablets on human beings to pick up and read. 
God sent a man and made him the perfect example for humanity to follow. So this is why when you have to travel to God as everyone has, you need to feel the urge to come closer to God, to please God, your creator. Then you need a guide. Imam al-Jazuli was a, a Sufi master, was a spiritual guide, very much qualified. But he left the book for those who do not have guides. This is why the scholars say, if you do not have a Sufi master to guide you to God, take the la il al khayrat guides to goodness as your guide. It will help you travel the way and find your guide to God. This book is uh, indeed a treasure. It contains approximately 2,000 sentences, 580 forms of prayers. It includes knowledge of theology, knowledge about the prophet. It includes principles of purification of the heart, ethics, the science of the heart, cultivating your soul. And Imam al-Jazuli indeed was a master in these three areas. So he included in the book not just prayers, he wanted your belief in God to be firm. So he included all proofs to the unity of God, to the existence of God, to the design of God. But in a, in a very indirect way, not teaching you principles, not enumerating the qualities, attributes of God, but rather including them smoothly in the prayer. He also seeks to cultivate our souls, rid us from envy, from hatred, from rancor, from anger. But instead of giving us instructions, do that, don't do that, be like this, don't be like this, he rather puts them in subtle ways as prayers. Oh God, protect us from envy. Oh God, protect us empty our hearts from rancor. In that style, he's not giving you direct instructions. He's just telling you to pray for God to remove these things from your heart. Maybe you don't have them, but the prayer will remind you. Maybe if given you as instructions, or if you handed over a book of instructions on ethics, you wouldn't feel the need or the urge to read it, but because of your love for the Prophet wasallam, you read this book and it works on you in a very indirect way. The book does have a lot of benefits. They say anyone who recites the book for, 40, for any reason, 40 times, will get what he wants. Business, success in business, uh, success in marriage, recovery, uh, any thing you need, something big in your life, an obstacle, you take this book and you recite it 40 times and you get it. This has been proven, it has been well established. Imam al-Jazuli wrote this book by a suggestion upon a suggestion of a woman. And this brings us to women behind Imam al-Jazuli and the role of women in the Dala'il al-Khayrat and shows us that women's are integral part of Islamic legacy, Islamic tradition, Islamic spirituality and uh, Islamic academy, study, research, knowledge. There are some people who say, oh, why don't we have women as Imams? We have women as Imams. Of course, women can be imams for women, but the job of an imam is not the best job. The job of an imam is not the top job. An imam in a mosque for the five ritual daily prayers is just an employee. 
And he has 10 masters and 10 bosses above him to tell him what to do or what uh, not to do. And to validate him and give him authority or sack him and invalidate him. And women are actually amongst the higher rank. They could be scholars and there have been many scholars Women who are higher than imams and can validate imams or invalidate imams and train imams and authorize imam. This is where women are. And there is a higher rank than imams and than the ulama or scholars. The highest rank is saints. Saints are above ulama. The ulama, actually, the scholars and the most erudite scholars in Islam, they seek the pleasure of the saints, of the awliya. They sit at their feet, they humble themselves in front of them to seek their blessings and they submit their will to them that they take them to God in their spiritual journey. And these saints, many of them were women in Islam from the early generation. Anyone who picks up now a book on who's who, in our modern time now, you probably won't find more than 10% of who's who of the celebrities of this time, 10% uh, women, not more probably. I've tried a few years ago. But go back to the time of the prophet and the books of who's who in the time of the prophet over 14 centuries back, and at that time, there is more than 10% of women amongst who's who around the prophet. The disciples of the prophet, more than 10% of them were women. Go and consult books written on who's who like Al-Isaba, Fi Tamiz Sahaba by the most famous uh, scholar of hadith and biographies of the Sahaba, Al-Hafiz Ahmad ibn Hajar Al-Asqalani, who died year 80, 852 Islamic calendar. It was a saint a woman saint who inspired Imam al-Jazuli to write this book. He was in Fes, the story says, and he wanted to form a pollution, wash his limbs. He found a well, but didn't find a bucket to draw water up. He looked around, went in search for a bucket, a young woman was looking from a window, saw him. She asked him who he is, what he wants. When he said his name, he was already made famous. She find it quite strange that Imam Jazuli, as famous as he is, he was young at the time, cannot draw water without a bucket out of the well. She found it very strange. So she murmured with some words and water gushed out up from the well. He found it wondrous and he insisted on her, I swear by God, you tell me what you, how did you do this? She said, the only thing I did is to pray for blessings for the messenger of God. Which form did you use? No, I'm not going to tell you. Go and write, collect, compile forms, and let me see. So he went and wrote this book. He wrote it in the city of Fes. He wrote it in the city of Fes. We don't have the exact date, but I believe he wrote it in his early years of youth, that is to say, when he was around 25 to 30 probably. And he came back to the woman. The story did not end with the ablution. He went back to that young woman and he showed her the book and wanted to know which form she used to draw water out of the well. She told him the form is in the book but she did not point out to any specific one. So it is in the book. This is one lady. Another lady, Imam al-Jazuli was born around year 800, Islamic calendar. Although some suggest he was born 807, but I believe that he was born between 790 and 800 after long research and studies. So 
we have a letter written by him, the text of the letter, dated 824. He sent it from Al Medina, Al Munawwara, Medina, to his Sufi master, Sidi Muhammad Amgar, in Morocco. Imam Al Jazuli was born in mid south of Morocco, Sous. And after memorizing Al Quran Al Karim and having studied the basic subjects in Islamic sciences to be qualified as an Imam, he went to Al Qarawiyin University in Fes the highest center of studies in Morocco, in North Africa, and probably second at that time to uh, Al-Azhar University and Zaytuna University. These are the most and uh, famous three universities, and Al-Qarawiyin is the oldest amongst them in the world. He went there and pursued his deeper studies, higher studies, further to qualify as a jurist, as a theologian, as a scholar of various specialties in the Islamic sciences. He stayed in a school known as Al uh, Madrasa, Madrasa al Safarin. His room is preserved till today, is well known. And while studying, he was more attached to the next life or to the spiritual life. At one point, he had a closet in his room, which visitors can see today when visiting his room in uh, Madrasat al safarin in Fes. And uh, he wouldn't let his classmates or any guests into the closet, to the point that they suspected he may have a treasure, he may he have hidden something inside. So they wrote to his father. His father's name is uh, Abdul Rahman. And his grandfather is Abu Bakr. And his uh, great-grandfather is, is Suleiman. But his great-grandfather was most famous, so he was named after him Muhammad, son of Suleiman, Muhammad ibn Suleiman. But his actual series of names, Muhammad, son of Abdul Rahman, son of Abi Bakr, son of Suleiman. They wrote to his father, his father came and entered the closet and found that his son wrote the word death, 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 death to himself, meaning reminding himself of the moment of death and how he's going to meet his Lord. That is to say, he wanted to prepare himself this is how the Prophet instructed us. We work in this life as we're going to live for a hundred years. But we work for God as we're going to meet him today in the evening or next day. That's how a Muslim lives. You work for your community, you serve humanity, you serve the servants of God and plan for your future as you're going to live for a hundred years. But you work for God as you're going to meet him tomorrow. That's how Imam al jazuli was. He finished his studies. He memorized uh, a huge volume of uh, Islamic law known as Mukhtasar of Ibn al-Hajib, a great uh, Malikite uh, jurist. He memorized it all. He studied very deep. He went back to his area. Mostly he worked as an Imam for a number of years. War interrupted in his area. He was longing for spirituality. He was thirsty. So he decided to go in quest for a Sufi master. He traveled to Tangier. From Tangier, where he might have uh, been engaged in with scholars or with uh, battles against the Portuguese, in Tangier, he met a saint, a woman. Back to the role of women in his life and how his life was decided by women saints. That woman asks him, where are you heading? We don't have the full conversation amongst the meeting, but the main point, a lot of discussions must have gone between him and her. Him presenting his case, explaining his goals and what he is in search for. And she tells him, no, you don't travel abroad. People need you in Morocco here. Go to Fes. He goes to Fes, and in Fes he meets the second woman saint, and he writes his book, Guides to Goodness, Dalail al-Khayrat. That's the story of 
women in his life, and this did not stop here. Imam al-Jazuli had over 12,000 disciples he developed later on. He traveled to the Middle East. He stayed in the Middle East, it says, seven years. Three of them in Medina. I suggest he may have traveled twice to the Middle East. And he recited his book, the La Ilaha Al-Khayrat, for three years every day in front of the shrine of the Prophet People sometimes say, what's the secret, what's the elixir of the success of a writer? The most important secret is sincerity. You want to serve humanity. You love the subject. You're not working for fame or money. You're working to serve God and God's servants. There is a book of grammar that is very famous, known as Ajr Rumiya, written by Muhammad ibn Ajr Rum, a Berber from the Amazigh tribes of Sanhaja in south of Morocco. No one knew of him. He wasn't famous in his time. He was non-Arab even, and he wrote the most famous book on Arabic grammar, the grammar of the Arabic language, Ajr Rumiya. It is used everywhere in the Muslim world. Beginners use it from, from the east to the west. What's the secret of that success? He wrote it facing the Kaaba. He wrote his book facing the Kaaba with pure intention of serving humanity. And he got the success which no publishing house would, would have helped him to get or no one could achieve that level of success. The same with Imam Al-Jazuli. He had the secret of loving the Messenger of Allah. I tried as much as possible in the translation to convey not only the words, my style is not to translate literally, but to convey the spirit of the text and also to, to put as much as possible the emotions of, uh, of the author in the translation. And he succeeded and the book went east and west. No book has been given attention after the book of Allah, the Holy Quran, as much as Dala'il al-Khayrat, artists. Calligraphers, reciters, scholars, kings, sultans, wealthy people competed in serving this book and spreading it. Calligraphers would excel in writing it. Artists would excel in ornamenting it. Wealthy people would put their wealth as endowment for reciters of this book. Sultans, countries like Morocco, where the book originated, the rulers of Morocco served this book until today. May Allah reward King Muhammad VI for serving Imam Jazuli's shrine and the book of Imam Jazuli and the tradition of Imam Jazuli, which is love and the middle way of Islam. This is what uh, the book is about. And Everywhere you go, even jobs were created as chief reciter of Dala'il al-Khayrat, Shaykh Dala'il al-Khayrat, or the Muqaddam of Dala'il al-Khayrat in the Gran Umayyad Mosque, at Al-Azhar Mosque, at Al-Qarawiyin Mosque, major mosques, Al-Fatih Mosque in Istanbul, reciters of Dala'il al-Khayrat were paid to sit every day there and recite this book to honor the Messenger of Allah. We don't care about people who slander the Prophet because we have millions of Muslims who praise him. We don't care about a person who wants to burn a copy, published copy or printed copy of the Quran because we have millions of Muslims who memorize and carry the book of Allah in their hearts, including 1.6 million in Morocco itself alone. 1.6 people memorize the Quran Karim in Morocco. More than 100,000 of them are women in Morocco alone, let alone other countries. People serve this book in every possible way so that it, it is the best treasure for the Muslim Ummah. On every shelf, over 100 commentaries have been written about this book to explain it. It has been translated into almost every Islamic language, Urdu, Malay, Turkish, Hosa, every possible Islamic language it has been translated. And of course, it has been translated in English before many, many times. And the Ummah needs to get back to the roots 
of Islam. As Muslims, many people think that to make us Muslims is to repeat there is no God but Allah. That's right, but there is the rest of it. There is no God but Allah, la ilaha illallah is half of it. The Prophet is the other half. Prophet Muhammad is the other half. Muhammadun Rasulullah. A lot of people object sometimes when we put Allah Muhammad beside each other and they think that we are, we're elevating the rank of Prophet Muhammad to the rank of God. No, actually they are beside each other. When you say la ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, Allah Muhammad, they come together beside each other and you cannot be a Muslim, a true believer in God unless you respect, you love, respect honor, revere, and believe and follow the messenger of God, the final messenger, prophet of Islam, peace be upon him all. I reiterate my thanks to the board of uh, Bradford Literature Festival and to all of the organizers of this event. May Allah bless you all. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, uh, we thank uh, Sayyidina Sheikh Muhammad Yaqubi for uh, allowing us to join him on this journey to the Dala'ilul Khairat. Uh, there will be uh, these books available, and I believe the Sheikh will also be uh, making signed copies available for people. So once again, for those who aren't familiar, uh, there's the introduction to Dala'ilul Khairat, uh, which is uh, in uh, both Arabic and English. And then there's the Arabic version of the Dala'ilul Khairat, which as I mentioned before, has been compiled after lots of research and lots of scrutiny into finding the most authentic version of it. Uh, and many of you won't be able to see the detail here, but you can see it downstairs where it's available. It really is a beautiful book, mashallah, tabarakallah. Uh, that will be uh, available as a set, and that's together with the new English translation. Uh, English translations out there do, ha do exist, and they have existed, the book has been translated into English, uh, but what Sidna Sheikh does is brings a unique perspective to this, obviously through his command of both the English language, but also of the Arabic language and his understanding of the Islamic sciences. So we ask Allah Most High, as he has opened the hearts of many generations of the past to the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through the Dala'il and through the Salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala opens our hearts to the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to the love of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the love of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the love of the victors of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the love of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the love of the offspring of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these are the takbirat, the salawat which we read after the takbirat on the days of Eid. And this is one form of peace and blessings upon the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What we find in the Dala'ilul Khairat is a complete manual of these beautiful compilations. And as Sayyidina Sheikh alluded to, there are many secrets within this book and there are many openings. But what we say is don't go there to get these these worldly benefits, although the worldly benefits will come. The blessings will come with the Salat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But let's make our focus Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So to conclude, we thank everybody for being at this event today. And we pray that you've been given a portion from the portions of the blessings of the Dala'ilul Khairat, of the guides to goodness. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts us into the circle of those who send their peace and blessings upon his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa jazakum allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.